It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 199, for the end of May 2022. I'm one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright, and with me is Ben Salter. Um, ben, I think we're going to have to stall, maybe do like an episode 199.5 or something, because I'm not ready not really. for 200. Like, it's not ready quick. to turn 200. This is like when you turn 40. You just weren't ready, <laughs> but you had to embrace it eventually. So we're going to turn 200. It's been like seven years or something. Probably, it's, no, longer. It's been more longer. Than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's fine. We'll get there. We'll, 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 we'll do something. And if nothing else, we'll do a 200th ep- 200 episode that is just a 200th episode by nothing more than number. Anyway. Yeah. yeah it's, it, what, what, what have you been up to? You turned 31. Your dog turned one. One. He turned one. He, so his name is Banjo. He's a fail on the internet that I didn't actually put on the internet, but it's one of those things that could have gone viral. Uh, so his name is Banjo. We got him a dog keg because in lockdown, apparently, everyone made weird little businesses from home. And this one is booming. All they do is dog cakes. Uh, and they're like getting crazy sales, apparently. And we're one of those suckers who bought him a dog cake. Except we, you fill out the online form. So his name was definitely spelled correct. But on the cake, they wrote, Happy Birthday, Bango. Oh. Which doesn't quite have the same ring to it okay name for a dog i mean puppies are trying to bang everything basically until they eventually get a little surgery which they don't like uh, and it kind of calms that down um yeah so it's it's a name that could have worked for him at one point but not so much anymore so an audio phone call for no you said form you filled in like you typed uh, in characters form. into the internet okay yeah. it's gonna be like did you phone and say like it's banjo like b-a-n-j-o and they wrote bingo, but like that didn't even, they just wrote bango. I like, I can't even yeah. explain it. Yeah, the they internet. just got it wrong. Doesn't matter. That's how it is. Anyhow, Fair we enough. move along. Well, happy yeah. birthday to bango and uh, happy birthday to you, Bren. I'm trying to be yeah. a ban. Nah, anyway, yeah, I'll be quiet. Something like that. Uh, it's weird. There's no games coming out, but there's like a ton of stuff to talk about. Mm. So things are good. happening so because let's... they're not happening. Pretty much. Let's talk about uh, the the important news of the the Fortnite, and we'll maybe get into what we've been playing. There's a couple things. There's not much, uh, and because of course we've timed this so well, uh, there are a couple things that I've seen and have either played or seen. Yeah, um, that like the embargo comes out like two days after this, and I can't be bothered delaying this. So we'll talk about it next time um, when hopefully the news dies down a little bit. But anyway, uh, the first thing that is obviously the most important is that Sony has given us an idea, not an idea of what to expect. They've given us like the full roster of games that are part of the new tiered PlayStation Plus system uh, across Essentials Extra Deluxe in Australia and Premium in cloud-able countries. The real regions. country. The ones that PlayStation remembered exist because they <laughs> seem to forget again this week. Correct. About the rest of us. Yeah. So the, the catalog is basically broken down into three categories. Uh, there's PS4 and 5 games across... Extra Deluxe and Premium. There is uh, Classics, which uh, is really supposed to be original PlayStation and PSP games, but it kind of delves into like PS2 games on PS4. Yeah, well, we'll get into that. PS2 games. Um, And then there are PS3 games, which we don't have any access to because they're delivered entirely through the cloud. Uh, We can talk about that too. Uh, And I guess there's a fourth tier, which I don't really count because it's just demos. So we'll we'll get into that. Let's stick with the PS4 and PS5 lineup first, Ben. What do you think of the titles from both PlayStation and from third-party developers? Uh, For launch, and noting that these are not all games, but they're probably the highlights, uh, I think very good to start off with, knowing that this is not a service where new games come in, so they can't set those expectations pretty early that we're not going to get anything super new. Uh, by leading the original announcement with like Death Stranding, which is like 2018, and God of War, which I think is 2018, maybe Death Stranding might be 2019. Yeah. Um, that was kind of what I was thinking. And then they announced Demon Souls, which is still an old game. Like that was a, a PS5 launch title in 2020. Um, so yeah, not especially super new. Now, see, this is Bango in the background, going crazy. That's all right. Um, good, good job, Bango. He just got home from daycare and he's pretty cranky. <laughs> Tire himself out pretty soon. That's the fiance's uh, problem, not yours. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, my point is, before we were rudely interrupted, 
Uh, I was surprised a game like that's in there, and it's got more kind of gravitas and weight to it now because of how well Elden Ring has done. Like, I wouldn't have played it a few months ago. I wouldn't have cared about it, but now I'm definitely going to play that on this subscription service. I'm not paying $109 for it, but I'll definitely play it. Um, and same with things like Returnal is... So I wouldn't call that a new game, nowhere near new, but it's it's not ancient, and it is a PS5 game. So there's some stuff there. I think they've purposely delayed things like Ratchet & Clank. That's over 12 months old, but I think they want to keep a few things in the bank so that in July, August, September, they can say, here's something new again yep. um, and have things to release. So overall, pretty good. I think the Sony games are pretty strong. If you've been playing first-party PlayStation games for the last five years, there's probably nothing here for you because you've bought them already. Um, but the same could be applied to Game Pass. If you've been playing those games, you've already the big hitters, you've already played them. Like when things like like Red Dead, for example, is on uh, PlayStation Plus, it is a it's a pretty big game. It's still very popular. A lot. Who, anyone who wanted to play that by now would have played it. So yeah, it's probably there's not as much value if you've had a PlayStation for ages. Um, a few people I know during the COVID lockdown period got back into games. Like they had stopped for ages. They maybe last played kind of PS2, 3 era fell off in the xbox one ps4 and they've jumped back in now so i think for those people there's heaps here because there's all those big massive games from the last five years yeah um which are there to play so pretty good and that's the beauty i guess of this because it's it says like ps4 and ps5 game catalog but on, realistically it's a ps4 game catalog there's i think three or four ps4 ps5 games like miles morales which is like reasonably new but like most of them are ps4 games um but to their credit they're like absolute bangos of uh of, of video games uh like you know spider-man 1 and 2 uh death stranding you know depending on what you think about it uh things like god of war ghost of tsushima like most of the uncharted's until dawn the last of us there's like tons of playstation games there so if you you had a ps3 and went to xbox which is insane because everybody went the other way around um you know th there is a, a huge catalog of things that you will really enjoy um yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there that we'll, we'll kind of get into, I guess, when we're talking about comparisons maybe to Game Pass and like day one launches. Even things like, you know, there's there's Uncharted 4, Thief's End and Lost Legacy on the on the catalog for PS4, but not the new kind of like 60 frame, like slightly swisher PS5 versions. And that's Sony saying like, no, you don't get anything new, new. Yeah. You got to pay for that. Um Like, but to Sony's credit, like that's it's they've not hidden that. That's been... That's been the message from day one. So good if you're, like you said, good if you're not um, someone who's played a lot of these games. Not as exciting if you're someone who has. Um, but anyway, uh, w on the topic of, you know, the PS5 versions of those Uncharted games or, you know, the likes of Horizon Forbidden West. Like, how long do you think it is going to be until we see those newer games added to the catalog? I feel like they're not going to tell us on purpose because they don't want to basically stop their own sales for the same reason they haven't announced all the games on the service because some publishers probably said, no, don't say that our game's going to be on there because we want to still sell it up until the day it's on the service. We don't, I mean, that's what Game Pass does. They always drop here's games coming out today because they make it sound like it's exciting. You can play now, but it's really because they don't want to stop the sales up until the very last minute. Yep. Um, and so I think they're going to try to hide it initially by the fact that if we use Ratchet and Clank as the benchmark, that came out, what, February 2021? So over we're getting close to 18 months ago, and that's still not here. Now, I think, as I just said, it might be because they're saving that as kind of a big hitter to come out to kind of give it that push, because you all know when something like this launches, it's great, but then if there's no new content, it kind of dies away. So they need something new there, um, because I would have thought it would have been about 12 months. But I think it's going to kind of be different for different games. They going to try to make it not that predictable and i think it will be a surprise it'll kind of be like this is coming out tomorrow or something yeah um but yeah if it's if it's more than like 18 months you're getting to a point where it's you have to say this is old games exclusively um which would kind of be annoying but like if it was 12 months a lot of playstation games i would be happy to wait for like uh, i do really enjoy them but there's only a select few that i want to play straight away god of war being one of them but Something like Horizon, I'd be happy to wait a year or so and play it later and jump on the subscription and play it there. So I think that's what they're worried about. Xbox is happy with people to do that. They don't mind if you actually buy their game or not, but I think PlayStation want to get that 20 million copies sold and now it goes on the service. Yeah, and like one of the latest quotes from, I forget who it was at Sony in a financials call said, you know, like putting things on day one would deteriorate the quality of PlayStation games because they're so mm. dependent on 
the game's making enough money to then kind of inject back into invest back into development of the next ones with like and fair enough that's that's your call um I think you're right. You've, you've hit the nail on the head on. It's not going to be like a, a static, like six months from the time of release, this new one comes out or 18 months or 12 yeah. months or whatever, because then people would know, oh, okay, well, God of War Ragnarok comes out on the 18th of November and I can wait until this time to play it. Like they, they Sony doesn't want you to be able to do that. So it's going to be like six months. It's going to be eight months. It's going to be nine months. It's going to be maybe like a surprise drop on like a, like a Destruction All-Stars, which like doesn't do well at launch. And like two weeks later, Sony just goes, ah, just put it on quick. Let's let's do it. Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah. But again, like Dare that goes- I say, the bigger the game, the longer the wait will be. So I think <laughs> I think you're right. That a little dud game that goes nowhere like Destruction All-Stars might sneak on in like six to nine months. Um, but something big like Spider-Man 2, let's say that comes out next year. I think you're looking at 2025 maybe 2026 for that to launch like i think they're gonna the real big hitters like the main games which are on the sony studios logo they're not coming here anytime soon when when the ps6 comes out spider-man 2 remastered on ps5 will be on playstation plus deluxe um yeah. anything else you want to say about the, the there's i guess we didn't really talk about the third party stuff but it's pretty kind of like equal to what you'd kind of see on a on a xbox game pass and i know what they're not they're not it's apples to oranges not apples to apples but things like the artful escape you got nba 2020 2k22 mortal kombat 11 guardians of the galaxy like it's it's not a surprising Similar. list it's stuff that's yeah so probably already I think played it's pretty it. strong i think it's pretty strong i think there'll be stuff the average person hasn't played like how many games do you buy in a year a lot of people probably skipped guardians of the galaxy stuff like that uh so i think it's pretty strong the, the difference Game Pass has is, as well as their own stuff, they do launch indie titles in there as well, which gets them a little bit more exposure. Um, stuff like you just mentioned, The Artful Escape, probably falls away if that launch and it gets put into a sub-service like a year later. But if it's launching there day one, it has a little bit more interest. Um, I'm more likely to try it. So whether or not Sony do that is yet to be seen. Yeah, and like I, I don't know if it's a... a, a problem of the ps4 ps5 like the way that they handle cross-gen games like they're basically two different games and it's not like you're accessing the same license and same game um there are yeah. three ps4 ps5 games like cross-gen games from first party studios and one two three four five in the third party lineup so like i don't know sony come on get it together um and i guess it goes without saying that a lot of these games are kind of already attached to the ps plus collection um but, you know, like mm. PlayStation Plus subscribers already get access to that. So, you know, like that's just part of the deal, I guess. As long as you're, I don't know how that works. I guess Essentials might still have access the, to the collection or maybe you don't. I haven't mentioned the collection really. I think so. Um, but a few things have started to leave that. So whether they at some point just scrap it entirely, that would make sense because all of these games are in extra, I think, or most of them are. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of gone... People have kind of ignored that a little bit. They've listed things like Days Gone and Uncharted 4 as being in there and how great that is. But they're already in the collection. If you've had PlayStation Plus for the last year and a half, you've got that already on PS5. So, yeah. Well, uh, even, there even are, things yeah. like Control, like PlayStation Plus, not the collection, but PlayStation Plus had Control. Yeah. So you, you get that again. Um, so, it, yeah, it's, it. you know, you, you have access to the games. You probably, are own, own, probably already own half of these, um, which could just mean that, depending on the next segment of this, you know, catalog, maybe you don't get deluxe or premium or the other one extra. You just stick with essentials. So anyway, yeah. um, what what do you think of, of the next segment of the catalog, the classic games catalog, which is original PlayStation, PSP, and kind of PS2, but PS4, like we were sort of alluding to, where do you want to start? Awful. Uh, <laughs> the fact that you need to pay extra for this, and then in Australia they cut off PS3, very disappointing. That was a bit that I was looking forward to more. Um, the, the PS2 bit is the worst part of it for me. It's That was more what I wanted to play. There were not that many of the games of that era that I want to play. We've talked about playing like Xbox 3 back and pat. A lot of them are hard to get your head around these days. But there are some big hits on PS2 that I'd like to play again. Um, and I would do in a subscription just to dabble with it for a little while. And there's like nothing. There's a small handful of the, what were they called? PS2 classics on PS4. Um, yeah. And so it, technically, when they listed them, they listed them all as PS4 games because that's what they technically are. You're not playing the PS2 version, you're playing the PS4 version, which has like four trophies in it and it's up res and it, I think it plays back at the wrong frame rate or something if you're in Europe because they never bothered to fix it. Um, so that'll probably happen again. 
which is a problem Nintendo's had up until this generation. Like they've, we've only got Mario 64 in the correct like orientation for 60 frame TVs now. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it's only fixed that. I was hoping they were going to say, here's a whole bunch of PS2 games. It's, it's the most nostalgic generation by the fact that it's the most popular one, like 155 million consoles sold. Everyone had a PS2 or they knew someone with a PS2 and they experienced those games. Um, very disappointing that it's been treated pretty poorly as if they don't really care. And the same can be said for PS1 and PSP. I think there was one PSP game in there, maybe two, um, and a very small handful of PS1 one games. from Housemark, I think, from looking at it. Yeah, yeah just one. Uh, Super, it, Super Stardust Portable on PSP. The difference from between Extra and Deluxe isn't that much in Australia, but it's it's probably not worth it unless there's a bunch which they're keeping up their sleeve to shadow drop. Um well, yeah, it's it's pretty it's Nintendo esque how they're treating their back catalog, which is poorly. If the original if the original Resident Evil two and three Yeah, from PSP no PSP from PS1, PS1 were on this service, I would really, really struggle to not just throw money at Sony. Um and it's weird because they were like their PS1 classics in the ecosystem of the PlayStation store. And I was like mm. super hyped for them to come back because, you know, like I had them on my Vita and stuff. Like I bought them to put on my Vita for that very purpose of like, ooh, old games that like I can play again. And it's not, you know, the the GameCube remake of Resident Evil or it's not, you know, like the new Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, they're just gone. And like the only Resident Evil game in this catalog isn't even 7, which is getting removed from Game Pass at the end of this month. It's the Resident Evil like GameCube remake that was put onto like PS4 oh, yeah. and Xbox One and stuff. Um, that's a good game, but it needs to be remade. That's twenty years old, and so I already own it. I don't. I don't want remake. the one I already own. I want the classics that I'd have to go and buy an old PlayStation and like figure out how to connect it to a TV and to play because I can't. I There's no way to come. do that. Hopefully, the uh, the positive bit <laughs> hidden away in there is that if you did buy any PS1 classics on, I think PSP as well on PS3 or Vita. You'll be able to play those without a subscription when they come into this service. Um, I didn't know that. They did announce that today. So not the not the PS. So there was the classics line on PS3 and Vita, which is separate to the classic lines on PS4. Like the PS2 classics on PS3 are not the ones that are coming to this service. It's the PS4 ones. Um, anyhow, look overlook all of that. The PS1 and PSP classics you already own. You'll be able to play without a subscription. So it's so, just back compat, like proper back yeah. compat. Coming from like probably the game preservation team that we talked about last episode, but it's it's back. It's not proper. It's back compat with your PS3 version of a PS1 game. So obviously not the PS1 game is not back compat. Oh yeah, God, that's confusing. If you bought Resident Evil One, the PS. <laughs> Let me try to phrase this clearly. It's going to be tough. You bought Resident Evil One, the PS1 game on PS3. I did. You better play it on PS5 without the subscription once it's added to the subscription service. But will I'm pretty we... sure you know. What about the cloud? Yeah. But that's wouldn't it be through the cloud because it's a PS3 cloud. game? Um, no, because it's a PS1 classic. <laughs> it's the I, I see that's a good point. Does it count as a PS1 game or a PS3 game? I don't know. I hope okay. so. I want to put play a pin it. in that. I think you still get. That's a good point. I I'll don't ask. Know I'll I'll ask Sony it. about that, and I'm sure I'll get a response <laughs> anytime soon. Yeah, that's a good point. <sighs> oh well. Well, I hope. I hope. Like that's good news for everybody else, if not also australians because like literally i i have bought ps1 versions of re1 and re2 at least and i would love to have access to those again and i would just i would pay a subscription service to do so i i am that i'll add them i think they'll be in there or there'll be an announcement later or something no doubt they are they know that Xbox will come at this in their june showcase with here's what we're doing and they're ready to go with here's some other stuff we're doing that said, this is launching in Asia next next week, I think. So we're not getting it until June 22nd. 22 or 23. Yeah, it says 22 and, or 23, depending on... I don't know, like, if people have, are. like, transitioned the date. To, but yeah, so, like, that those two days anyway, it'll happen. So they're going to try to hide, like, we don't want to give you anything. We don't want to give you everything until you actually get it and it launches. But we're going to know everything next week when it launches in other countries. There's going to be very few different games after that. True that. Something that we maybe don't know yet 
it's like I think we can assume we know the answer, but like we can't get a definitive answer from from Sony or Ubisoft. Is uh, Ubisoft Plus is going to be on PlayStation and Xbox? It's already on Stadia and PC and other things. Um, but there's a a small curated listing of games called Ubisoft Plus Classics, which will be given to uh, PlayStation Plus. Del- no, PlayStation Plus Extra, extra and premium subscribers for sure. Uh, there was no mention of Deluxe uh, in a press release from Ubisoft Australia. They said it's initially going to be given to extra members. Yes, these tears are making my head hurt. And they couldn't confirm to us if um, that is also extended to the Deluxe tier, which is all that Australians can get. I'm I'm willing to assume so, but because yes. no one can confirm this for us i'm not saying it's confirmed yet but we'll let you know when that happens um the listing of games is pretty good like it's it's a i think it's 27 games now and they're hoping to get it to 50 by the end of the year um things like a, a bunch of far cry games south park star trek bridge crew uh which i guess you can play in vr you can certainly play it out of vr now they updated it uh a bunch of trials games watch dogs the original watch dogs ac valhalla which is also i think just part of playstation plus anyway no it's through the collection they put it like a double asterisk <laughs> oh they double dipped okay there we go so there's like a ton of like decent ubisoft games that you kind of get um similar to like ea play on xbox game pass similar but the more i looked at it it's not quite as good in that ea play you eventually get everything that's on ea play this is a very curated list and they a little bit sneaky ubisoft by listing assassin's creed Valhalla as the top game because straight away you think oh something relatively recent again not that recent but recent-ish and then beyond that it's like five years old plus like super old stuff more or less there's no other assassin's creed game there's far cry like three and four but not five and six yeah there's Watch Dogs one but not two and legion right um it's like it is when they say classic they mean the real classics not like the mid-tier yeah. the crew um, not the crew two etc not that because they want you to pay fifteen dollars a month to actually subscribe to this so <laughs> they uh, want you to yeah, do the I same think... thing that sony wants you to do with their first party games that are new they want you to have both to buy this and also subscribe yeah. to this if you have no interest in paying ubisoft no matter what i think it's nice to get a few of their games included but uh on it's yeah there's nothing of great value because the besides Valhalla, which is clearly that's the you know that's the carrot they're dangling to try to get you to see what else is there but the rest take that off and this list is Ubisoft games they couldn't sell you if they tried. Like it's their, they put these on sale for $4 and no one buys them list of games because they're all just sold. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, I, I've played all of these games. I wouldn't they're mostly be good. hard pressed to say like, you should definitely play these games now in 2022 because there's, well, there's enough stuff that com- that's come out in the last couple months that you should play it way ahead of this. But it's that, it's that same thing of if someone is relatively new to this, it's just yeah. a nice added bonus if you haven't, use the bonus before um well, any last th- we've been talking about this for a while any last thoughts on uh the playstation plus catalog uh no except that i'm going to subscribe but i think i'll go for extra at the moment unless they can win me over with some real ps2 games and some more ps1 games for um i've forgotten or deluxe because it's just yeah that's not good enough for me but i think the extra library is pretty good and there's even if you played a lot of stuff there's enough there that there's there's some games to get you through the next few months of again nothing coming out so pretty strong stuff the only thing i'm really keen on is demon souls to be honest and like looking at the rest of the list it's stuff i've already played or wouldn't play again or wouldn't go back to play i think i'm going to stick with essentials and like maybe buy demon souls and just see how i go you can always do the old sneaky one month subscription for whatever it costs and play it the one game you want and cancel and that's why they make one month so much more expensive than a whole year so but that's an option that is i didn't think of that that's a very good option look at me just willy-nilly throwing money away uh i i don't have a lot of money to throw away at 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 microsoft uh in the next little while because we had a, a confirmation that two of uh bethesda's big games and probably the biggest games for Xbox on the whole in 2022 were delayed into next year. Those being Mm. Arcane's Redfall and Bethesda Game Studios' Starfield. Uh, Oops. What do you... Should Mm. you have maybe announced a release date for Starfield that far in the past if you weren't entirely certain you were going to hit it? I was so confident. Um, Yeah, I'm... (laughs) 
I'm both surprised and not surprised at all that got delayed because it didn't feel like it was. When they said that release date, it was quite a while away, but it still felt too soon. Uh, but they were so confident about it, I thought they must be pretty close. Redfall, I'm not surprised about because we didn't really see much of it. And I thought I didn't even know that was coming out this year until it got delayed. It's supposed so, to be. It was supposed to be out like in the next three months or something, like mid yeah. 2022. And we had we've seen like a cinematic trailer and some leaked footage. I think of like a really early dev. So neither of these games were ready to go. Yeah. I, I, which is yeah, kind of yeah, it's scary. Well, I'm not, the thing is, so like we've been talking for ages about how everything's COVID affected and everything's being pushed back and that's the norm. And this generation hasn't really started yet, but we're probably reaching a point where everyone already knows that. So fair enough to, of course we, we don't want developers to go under horrible crunch conditions and have games really super buggy and not ready. So probably is for the best that stuff will get delayed. But then, as you say, why did they announce a date if they didn't really think they were going to make it? Like, we're at the point now where it's totally fine to be pretty disappointed in Xbox for this. Like, they, yeah. they're they the ones who set up these expectations. They knew that by the time they announced that, they knew what COVID was doing to the industry. Um, and then they they couldn't deliver months out. So, yet again, like, it's not like this is they did it to Halo. Like, they're few big titles this generation, and there's only been a few. They're pretty much all being delayed. Yeah. Um, well, and they they announced it for that date because it was really cool that it was going to hit like Skyrim's whatever yeah. anniversary. But like, yeah, and I get why you'd announce that Halo Infinite was going to come out with the the next gen yeah. console that you were planning to have. But like, man, and like the easy way around not having these kind of instances is just like don't announce a date, and that's what. Well, like Sony kind of got burned for Horizon Forbidden West, but not with uh, God of War Ragnarok. They're like, it's coming. Probably this year. No. I'm not convinced it's I, coming out in 2022, but I, like I, we don't no. know when in 2022, and it's still this year, so who knows? But like, yeah, don't put a specific date in, and then people aren't going to get pissed off when you don't hit it. Yeah, they've been given a license to delay God of War, and I think they will. Uh, they would love to get it out this year, but they have no pressure to anymore, so Wait, I don't think they will. And Sony's put out Horizon and Gran Turismo. Xbox has put out. Uh. Yeah, uh uh, yeah so i think yeah. that's 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 the thing to go back to to skip a point ahead uh so xbox have 23 studios seven of them are under bethesda so which is a relatively new acquisition not that surprising that they're still figuring out how they work together but the other 15 they just they don't seem to have their release schedule as tightly worked out as sony does like they they release games all throughout the year they in a, a standard non-affected year they don't release that many more games than xbox has been doing but they just release them at a better rate like they've they've already gone with two games this year yeah i'm sure sony would have preferred to split them up a little bit more but they they still kind of had them in the first half of the year and they plan for god of war later in the year and they probably have a couple of more exclusives as well and they're um, completely different. Like people playing Horizon yeah. aren't necessarily like the ones who are going to jump onto a Gran Turismo, whereas Redfall is kind of a shooter, and Starfield is kind of a shooter, maybe. And they're kind of like RPG, very yeah. much different RPGs. But like there is definite overlap in the two games that we were expecting from Microsoft, which probably will come out at the same time, or maybe similar. Yeah. Yeah, that, they just need to work out their release schedule a little better. And I'm sure they'll get there and they they know all this stuff. And they, they just need to work on getting maybe some different scale games because that's what they had done well. For a little period, they're releasing stuff like Battletoads, which was a clearly a much smaller, quick-to-make game, relatively speaking. Um, and they probably just need a few more of those so we don't just keep having your Halo Infinite, your Starfields, your like Perfect Darks, the games that seem to take forever to make yeah. um, so they can get some more stuff coming in those gaps. And more like Battletoads stuff and less reliance on the tunics and the shredders of the world, which aren't really like Microsoft things, but kind of like indie things yeah. that may appeal to some people. Um, and less like Groundeds and uh, yeah. let's see, what was that other one? That like fighting thing. Bleeding Edge. I kind of liked Bleeding Edge, but like I like. Oh, well, that was okay. And that was yeah, another quick one. But they supported it for like a week and then this went like, nah, this isn't working. Yeah. Like, who cares? Um, do you think anything is going to replace these two games now that they're not coming? To, Sorry. But I'm not sure what it can, pass, can possibly be. Like, they, they need to have something. They haven't, they're going to have no games for the whole year. And I don't recall a first party studio ever doing that. Um, even like Nintendo, when the Wii was dead, they had pulled something out. 
I'm not sure what it could be. I think Forza Motorsport's an obvious one because I was thinking that was going to release last year instead of Horizon 5. Yeah. And I feel like that probably would have released earlier had they not been delayed, which means it has been pushed back to this year. I don't think it was originally planned for this year. So maybe that's pretty close to ready. Um, and historically, they would announce that at E3, so their June, their June showcase this year, and it would come out a few months later. Like yep. We've sat through so many E3s where there's been Forza Horizon, Forza Motorsport, and it's coming out in a few months. That's the way they do it. So that's the only one I'm somewhat confident on. Aside from this GoldenEye room, which they constantly keeps coming up and goes <laughs> that's nowhere. That's hoping. <laughs> well, it would be an easy one. Like the game leaked on 360 a few like a year ago. Like they just need to give it a little more of a tidy up and it's ready to go. So sort that license out, Microsoft. Just throw money at it and get it out. It's ready to go. Um, otherwise, what else do they have? Like Perfect Dark doesn't seem anywhere near ready. Avowed from Obsidian, mm. equally oh, yeah. not ready. Um, uh, what was there? The, uh, there's other things that are fable. Not not ready. Not ready at all. I can't. I can't imagine. We've seen a, a title screen, not a anything. Mm. Like I almost kind of think that they need to double down on on the infinite of Halo Infinite and be like, okay, so you've played that story. You still don't have campaign co op, and you wish that you had that. But like, here's the next bit of the story, so you can keep playing Halo. I guess because we don't have anything. They could. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're they've been too busy trying to fix the the multiplayer stuff and getting like gearing up to do the next bit of mm. Halo Infinite. But like they kind of need to. They need something. Yeah. Uh, well, the rumor is also Gears of War getting a Master Chief Collection style package, which is not that exciting. But again, if you missed if you missed a generation, I mean, I'd probably replay some of them again. If you missed but a generation, problem- you can play them on Xbox Game Pass. They're already there. Who That's cares? a problem. They've, I'm pretty sure they've all got frame rate boost, whatever, added on anyway. The first one's already had a remaster, which was not that far off a remake. And I think it's um, on, I think Ultimate Edition's on Game Pass. Yes, I think. Yeah, it, is, it is. Good. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. Like, they're all good, but, like, I don't need to play them again. Like, I'll just be buying them. It's pretty time. game up. Yeah. So, but that's why it's an easy thing to do. They can outsource that to an external studio. They can just work on it for a relatively short space of time. And that's probably why it's leaked now. Like they're doing it at the moment. It's not that far off being finished. The first game was already mostly done. Um, so I think that probably will come this year. And I, I suspect they just kind of had that as a nothing little filler gap somewhere game. And now it's going to have to be like their holiday big release. Ho oh, hum. Um, great. So like, like th- their, their big thing. And I'm re- I'm reading your notes. I'm like, I'm, this isn't my thought. This is your thought. But I'll give you credit. But I'll, I'll just keep moving the discussion along. Uh, oh, it's a discussion. The, the Game Pass thing is like day one releases, and not necessarily just Microsoft ones. But but that helps obviously. Things like the Forza Horizon fives of the world and and Halo Infinite. PlayStation's kind of been criticized for not having those day one things. But this argument means nothing if there's not an actual day one release from yeah. Xbox to collect and play um so do you think xbox has to or will try to do something strategically to claw that kind of mentality back like a cod or making a deal with warner brothers for gotham knights or something to have like some sort of reason like like a back for blood but probably more yeah well i think i think they have to and i think they will um because their marketing has been day one releases on game pass for first party but they have dabbled with they've done a bunch of indies and they've had the odd third party game like back for blood which was warner brothers as well so um that makes me think that's a possibility here uh cod would be like the biggest get ever but the problem there is that sony have the marketing rights for cod for the next four or five years even though xbox is soon to probably own it (laughs) and that acquisition is not not approved yet not that's the other part of it like they they might not want to do anything which could potentially um, impede that i don't think that it would getting they're not getting it as an exclusive game they're just adding it onto game pass yeah um and essentially they'd be throwing money at it which they would then get back at some point because they're just paying their future selves so that could be pretty strategic um i don't know that they can do it if they if the marketing deal doesn't allow it it wouldn't surprise me if sony put in with activision these games can't go into game pass in their marketing deal possibly they seem to be pretty um, sneaky about that with Resident Evil, so I think Village can't go to Game Pass. Well, that may have just been a rumor, but something like that that they well, it's, that yeah, put it's in not. A... So, and Seven's coming out at the end of the month, like I yeah. said before. So, not, but that's not, the, the... not uh, correlation or anything. It's just coincidence, perhaps. 
the problem is there are not that many other games besides those two which they could even try to get as day one launches. Like, there's not much coming out this year. There'll be stuff that hasn't been announced yet, but I don't think there's going to be anything super big. Yeah. Um, well, like, Tunic was just... probably kind of it in terms of, like, other things they could try to claw in that are that are less big but still kind of interesting to general audiences. I think probably PlayStation has a better one for the remainder of the year in Stray, that cat game. Um, not that it's going to be on PlayStation Plus tiered system, most likely, but like that's not even on Xbox for Xbox to try to do something with. So. Trying to get. Yeah, I mean, they have Stalker 2, which is December, I think, since it got delayed, but it's not super exciting. I, yeah. um, <laughs> Take it or leave it. Considering where it's set in the world, it wouldn't surprise me if that got delayed again. Yeah. In much the same way that Advance Wars was. So they need to find something. I think it has to be one of those two. Maybe something else sneaks in that hasn't been announced yet, and maybe the release date's getting announced in the Xbox showcase, but that might be clutching at straws a little bit. Uh, but yeah, they, it's really, you know, on to you, Phil. Pull out something amazing because you need to fill this gap, especially the first year of PlayStation Plus having this subscription. Like, the thing they don't do is day one, day one releases. That's what Xbox does. But if that first year, that first holiday season, they don't do it either, like these things are essentially on parity and PlayStation pulls ahead if they actually get their act together, together with classic games. Like that's Xbox doesn't really have that. Time to strike while the iron is hot. Um, something Xbox could do is maybe look at its pricing uh, of Game Pass mm. Ultimate. Again, like it's hard to kind of compare these two services because they are they're similar but not exactly the same. Um, there are day one, you know, you don't have to buy an Xbox game like a Halo or a Forza. You already have it if you get Game Pass. But like the, the time for new releases is done and dusted. Does Xbox have to respond to PlayStation's pricing because it is cheaper to get PlayStation Press Premium or Deluxe here than Game Pass Ultimate? Like, do they have to do something along those I channels so. to, to compete? As you, it's hard to compare, as you say, because if you just do the monthly, PlayStation Plus Extra is actually $35 a year more than it would cost you for Game Pass Premium. But if you play it annually because it has an annual subscription and Game Pass doesn't, it's like 55 cheaper. So, which is almost a whole game. Um, I think the obvious thing, pretty much what Xbox has to do is bring in an annual subscription. Like, that's the only way they can compete with that. They've talked about the family deal as well, which I suppose is a level that PlayStation doesn't have. I'm down for family. Um, if they could keep the same price and just do family. I I've, I've told you the reason family. why. Well, but I, I, I pay for it for my dad. I pay for it for my nephew. Yeah. So, yeah, like, if I can just roll those back into my one subscription instead of potentially three, I'm a happy camper. And, yeah, and when there are, in, in well, I think we said this a couple of years ago, the next year when there's all these first party games coming out, it's very much worth the cost. Yeah, Like it, it will eventually be worth, worth the cost if it isn't now, depending on what you think. But uh, The other confusing thing is now PlayStation Plus is just everything. That includes your online play, it includes your subscription, it includes like your classic games and your Ubisoft and your perks. Whereas Xbox is still, that is Game Pass Ultimate, but a lot of people are on Game Pass Regular. And that still needs Xbox Live Gold. Um, they did totally, like we all thought that Gold was going and it was just going to be free to play online and you just get all these perks with Game Pass. And then Xbox came out and said, we've got a big announcement about Xbox Live Gold. The price is going to double. Um, and they, they just did not read the room at all. And the backlash stopped that happening, obviously, which makes me think they don't really get it. Um, I think they have the, to, that's the, probably their first easiest thing to do is, is roll those into, so like, uh god game pass is just essentials in the place they're all really confusing things and trying to explain this to someone who like just bought a console which i've done in the last couple weeks is just an utter nightmare Tough. but like game passes should be essentials and ultimate should be with pc game pass and with cloud like it should it should just be that i think yeah you can get game pass for just your console or just your pc and then ultimate has that and it maybe even the ea play stuff is only in ultimate I'm going to assume Ubisoft Plus Classic will be added to Game Pass as well. I don't think Ubisoft is that. They're basically using it to try to sell their own subscription, so I don't think they're tied to one or the other. Yeah, um, It'd be a, a, probably... a slightly smaller list because there's like PSVR games that you, you can't get on Xbox, but like on the whole, it'd be... Same deal. Yeah. They might even have different games. It might even be a, that's why there's only like, like, like Valhalla is only on PlayStation, but you get Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. You know, that's why... That actually might explain why there's some games missing and that list looks super weird on how do they pick some and not others. Well, um, especially when Ubisoft's like, yeah, this is coming to Xbox, but we're doing this extra special thing for PlayStation. Like it's 
like it's weird because it's sort yeah. of combating the EA play, but it's also not. I think it will come into Xbox too. I think EA play will go to me. PlayStation Plus too. Like, why wouldn't Probably EA wouldn't. want to do that? But anyway, yeah, if they get paid, I'm sure they'll do it. it. Doesn't they don't? There's a reason why EA games didn't go to Game Pass, but EA Play went to Game Pass. Like, it's a perk. It's not actually part of it. And it can probably leave at any time, too. So, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, they would at least would give them the positive aspect of saying, we heard you. We're getting rid of live gold. You can just play. Because they're doing the whole, Xbox is the one doing play on any device. And you can play all your PC games online for free, but not on Xbox or I assume mobile. So... It would make so much sense for them to now say, you don't need gold to play online. If you want to go out and buy a COD or whatever and not have a new subscription and still play it online, you can do that only on Xbox because you still need the subscription on PlayStation. Um, and just double down on getting people to subscribe to Game Pass. So I, think I don't think they're going to do it, I think, but it would make sense. I think something that we're going to see, we've heard rumblings of like Xbox everywhere i think it's called and it's it's like sort of the rumblings of the idea of like you can play fortnite via cloud gaming it's not on xbox game pass ultimate it's just it's cloud enabled because it's a free-to-play game and you can do it we're going to try to do more of that and there's rumors that you know like any xbox game that you own will get that kind of cloud functionality i think that's kind of where xbox is moving and i'm like really keen on that idea again like it's much better to play a game off the cloud on your dedicated hardware like it just is yes. um but it's a cool little perk but like depending on how that's packaged and how it's sold and how that all works in that whole ecosystem is that's that's kind of the thing that'll make or break it i think yeah well it's not it's not really part of this but i think what's going to happen at the june showcase is they're finally going to announce their streaming stick or box or whatever it is i think rumors came out about that a few weeks ago yeah um, and they talked and about it last year like they Actually, yeah, they said they were going to talk about it like early this year and they didn't. So they probably probably had some issues getting it to work because um, they're also talking about just having an app if your TV is strong enough to do it, which makes sense. A lot of things do that. Yeah, um, well, the, like the new uh, LG range has GeForce Now in 2022. So like yeah. it's, it might not be on old ones, but it might be on new ones. And if you have an older phone, you buy like a Chromecast stick or a, like equivalent, you know what I mean? Anyway, I sorry. think that as a product, because... It's a bit different to everything else in that you have to have this Xbox subscription or else it's useless. So I think they need to pretty much give them away. Like they they probably won't. They probably, like a controller plus a box, they probably want to sell you for 200 Australian. Um, but when you can get a Series S for, what's that cost, 450 or so, it doesn't look very attractive. And I'm not sure people would do that. Um, if you look at the controller on its own, is $100. I think they need to then give you the little box thing for like, Twenty dollars more at most. That's what I was going to say. And like, a, and a month of Game Pass Ultimate. Not even like, not even months. extra time, but like, like a little bit, and then you got to pay for the subscription after that. Yeah, and if I tell you what, if they put the considering controllers always go on sale, if they did the controller and the box for a hundred, the same price as just a controller, you get them in people's houses. People like you and I who have an Xbox, like you know what, I'll put that on another TV. Like if I don't think they'll do that. They're a company that wants to make money out of hardware. Um, but if they want to make money out of the subscriptions, I think they just need to give away these boxes and lose loads of money on them, but get the subscriptions happening. Yeah. Oh man, I take I take a Chromecast stick into work because I know the TV is already dialed into the fancy smancy university internet and just like go nuts. Um, anything else you wanted to say about this Xbox themed portion of the show? I think we had a fun fact that you wanted to share. Uh, well, the fun fact is just that in well, I didn't actually check fact check this because we're not a fact based show this is just off the top of my head i think uh, you're right so xbox has released one first party game on playstation this year being ghostwire, uh, ghostwire Tokyo. yeah uh playstation has released one first party game on xbox being their MLB nbl the show M that's it mlb the show <laughs> it's on game Pass. <laughs> it is it is <laughs> you can see i don't play that oh is it it's uh, not even xbox on has released it's not even on playstation plus that's insane Ooh, interesting that's it so might, weird. It's not the whole list. Well, that's it's just so weird that they wouldn't. A anyway, that's just I didn't even think of that. That's crazy. That's crazy. So each first party has released one first party title on the other platform this year. Uh, Xbox is being exclusive to PlayStation, and Xbox has released zero first party games on its own platform, which is pathetic. Yes. 
Uh, topic three, this, well, I, it's usually this fortnight in delays. You, you want to make it this year in delays. So yeah. have at it, Ben. You, you talk and I'll look to see if we have any new ones in the last uh, fortnight that we haven't talked well, about already, probably, including Redfall and Starfield. Probably heaps, but just, I recall us talking probably this time last year about how massive 2022 is going to be because so many games were delayed out of 2021 and 2020, if we're honest. Um, and now it seems like one of the quietest years ever in that the game of the year was released in February. We can call that now. Nothing's beaten that. There's just nothing else coming out since God of War will definitely be delayed. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of feels now like 2023 is going to be this huge year where this is going to be heaps of stuff. Everything got delayed. We're going to be kicking off in January with Dead Space Remake, and it's going to go all the way through to December, just constant bangers. And you're going to have no time to play all these games. Um, like the start of this year. Which like the, seems, yeah, seems but, terrifying, but now that there's nothing else, you can just go back through the backlog again. But it's actually going to happen next year. It's going to keep <laughs> happening. My question to you is, do you think next year is going to be massive? Or are all the games that were actually scheduled for next year just going to be delayed? So next year is going to get the 2022 games and the, the originally planned for 23 games are just going to be pushed back. And so it's actually not going to be that big of a year. Man, I feel like you're jinxing the entire world with that question because it seems like a good time to be alive we're sort of mostly kind of Still not really out time. of covid but are we really kind of sort of not really out of covid i don't know um if things continue on this trajectory and we kind of go back to like the world pre-pandemic things will kind of even out sort of i don't even know if they will actually thinking about this and talking at the same time because i think there's this new thing in the world of i'm not going into the office five days a week are you kidding me so i think work is impacted just by that yeah i think there's all the impact of the pandemic that's happened between now and then which like has probably caused starfield to be delayed and you know like dying light 2 dlc that's been delayed just because it's a little bit more difficult for our brains anyway because we're so used to a certain way of working to have transitioned in the pandemic and then sort of transitioned to a new er way of working hybrid since so i, I think we're probably going to see the impact of this for at least another year or two. So I just think release dates are very, very <sighs> static, yes. not static. The other one dynamic. dynamic. There we go. Um, and I, I just don't believe anything you hear for the next little while. I think until things properly stabilize. Is that, is that, what do you think? I think there will be. I think it will be a strong year, but I think most of those big hits will be games that were meant to come out this year, or some of them even earlier. Um, I think looking ahead, a lot of publishers will probably realise that things are taking longer this generation than they did last generation. Even without the pandemic, that probably was going to be the case. Um, and maybe things on their schedule for twenty three that haven't been announced, they're just going to quiet. Well, they, since no one knows about them, they're just going to push them back to twenty four or twenty five because. Let's, like, look at, let's take Starfield, for example. Why does Bethesda need to, whatever else they had planned for next year, they could push back because now they've got a big hit. They don't want to compete with themselves that much. Yeah. Um, it's, Fallout it's 5. It's an obvious thing to do. <laughs> no, that's Game Studios. Not Studio. specifically Bethesda <laughs> Game Studios. <laughs> no, yeah, no, as no, a publisher. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, and like, if you look at Nintendo, they've got Breath of the Wild push back. That's their big game. If they were planning to have, say, Metroid Prime, like, or Mario Odyssey 2 or something, why not say, actually, let's move that back another year because we've already got a big hitter next year. Uh, Sony is pretty much been delaying all the time. They love the February-March game because they often had them scheduled in for November and they just push them back a little bit. And now that's been like a really successful time for them. Like these, That's become a big window for releases. Um, so I think they love a game in there. They're going to have something there anyway, but maybe whatever they plan for that will just get pushed back and God of War will quietly slip into that period. Um, I think that's definitely going to happen. So to answer my own question, I think it is going to be a <laughs> a great year for games, but I, I think a lot of stuff that we had thought was down the pipeline, if you looked at our roadmap in 2020 and said what's coming in 2023, I think those games are going to get pushed out. And yeah. the stuff which comes next year is the stuff that was meant to come this year or even last year. It's been such a, a weird year. Like all the financial calls, financials calls have just occurred. And yeah. There's a lot of games that are expected to come out before the end of March 2023. And, like, you know, Ubisoft's Skull and Bones. Well, you know, I'll believe that when I see it. And a couple others. Um, just looking at 
uh, Remedy, my, like my favorite developer. They have so many they games in development. They've got two control games coming out, like a multiplayer one, the 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 sequel proper. They've got a Vanguard with Tencent, which is like another multiplayer game. They have the newly announced Alan, not Alan Wake, uh, Max Payne 1 and 2 uh, remake, remaster with Rocksteady, Rockstar. God, Rockstar. You, think I, you think I'm a journalist. Uh, and they have Alan Wake 2. And they have all those games in the works, which are on track. But then when it comes to Alan Wake 2, they're like, oh, you know, we were going to have a demo and a showcase around now to talk about this game. That can't happen because we need to keep working. And also, we're making a TV show, so that's kind of impacted how this is working. So th- it's not even just pandemic stuff. It's like this whole new, like, Disney Marvel universe thing that's kind of just like, oh, we need to we need to ver- diversify and, and do everything. And it's exciting and terrifying all at once. So, like, I, I think it's kind of like release dates are bad. Let us know when you're ready to put it out. And then just put it out. Who knows? Yeah, I think yeah, you've you've hit the nail on the head. Of things have changed outside of the everyone's working from home situation. It's the things are more connected. They're taking so much longer this generation than they did anyway. Like for some reason, we're super obsessed on having like photorealism to a degree, which is like not that different to last generation, but it making things take forever to come out. It's why Nintendo can just pop out their little cutesy vibrant games because they still look fine but like it's hasn't really changed in like 10 years their style um and even for them it's taking longer than it it used to like they used to have two platforms and they would pretty much double the amount of games they'd release Uh, and if they didn't have all those wii u ports to rely on this year on the last five years they would have probably struggled with switch titles so um yeah interesting to see how they're going to get enough stuff out uh over the next year like it's just Xbox should have a pretty strong gear, though. You can't have nothing and then nothing again. So they, And we can't just have Starfield and Redfall as like their only 2023 titles as if, like, here's what we always planned. Like, they got to have an amazing year. And there's no if or buts about that. One would hope. Uh, quick fire, as in just to answer the question with the name of the game, which game slated for 2023 are you most excited for? I, I've already answered Alan Wake 2. Come on. It's a no-brainer. Uh, it's Starfield. Oh, I thought you were going to say Breath of the Wild too, or the sequel to it the, is, whatever. But it's it's been so long that I'm like I'm kind of losing interest. Like when it, when it comes <laughs> back around, I'll be excited. Fair enough. Um, we've taken like an hour, so I, I like this segment next is uh, what we've been playing. It's both me this time. Uh, Trek to Yomi is on Game Pass, so if you can get it for free and try it, by all means, do it. Uh, it's like a Kurosawa uh, film. It's very gameplay loop. Uh, light so it's just repetitive as all hell um super stylized if you kind of seem like you're into it based on the trailers give it a go you might not make it through it might scratch an itch good for you if it does Uh, i've also played evil dead the game which is the uh 4v1 asymmetric horror title from saber uh in the same kind of vein as like friday the 13th and dead by daylight but uh, it's far more like action and combat oriented. So like with Dead by Daylight, you're trying not to die, trying to, you know, fulfill tasks and trying not to be seen by the killer. Uh, in Evil Dead, one player is the Kandarian demon trying to kill you, but you're also like Ash Williams with a chainsaw hand and a shotgun. So like it's it's very different in that. Um, and to combat that little balance, there's just a ton of stuff you have to do as the survivors. Find three portions of a map get the dagger get uh the lost pages of the necronomicon defend this go through horde mode like it's it's good but i think you have to have like a love for that 4v1 style game and a love for evil dead is even better uh there's a single player component but it's kind of light and it's like 30 35 minute missions that you know you can get to like the 34th minute and just have a bad run at the last second and straight back to the start for you so it's kind of frustrating in that respect i tried to burn through that do you have any questions about those two games ben um i did play trek to yumi very quickly just because it was on game pass and i thought it looks really cool the gameplay is awful like just not fun at all awful in like the didn't grab me at all yeah, repetitive, like repetitive, it, so. and very shallow. I understand. Yeah. 
stylized, right? Like it looks great. It, yeah, like, it, it looks, looks cool. cool. I could almost see myself watching someone on Twitch play it for about 10 minutes, um, which is a pretty good compliment for me because I never watch anyone on Twitch for more than 10 minutes or at all. The story is so, very thin and there's three, okay. uh, two or three points where you get to decide something, but it's like the same decision three times or two times. I can't remember how many times. And it's like this, the first time you do it, you're like, ooh, this could be important. And the second time it's like, didn't I already do that? Like, did I do okay. the wrong decision? Is that is it trying to get me to change? But, like, I don't know how that impacts the story overall because I cannot be bothered playing through it a second time because it, it's, like, it did not capture me to, oh, to want then. to do that. Not fun. That's what I mean. It's not. It wasn't fun at all. So, as we've said, if you're going to be in a, a subscription service, you need to be interesting and enjoyable to play within the first couple of minutes because I'm moving on, and that's exactly what I did. Have you played Dead by Daylight? No. Ah, well, evil. I I like Evil Dead, um, but I like it because I am that combination of like I like the genre and I love Evil Dead, and like as far as Evil Dead love letters go, it nails it visually, the sound, like everything about that is amazing. So like if you have some sort of intersection into those two very specific like interests, you'll love Evil Dead. And it's like sixty bucks, so it's like it's not a full priced Australian game. It's sixty bucks AUD. Um, as opposed to a hundred bucks, like it's it's really good. Um, if you like all the things I've said previously, end of show. Okay, no, <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much, yeah, yeah. Well, how do we find you and uh, Bango on the internet? Uh, I am Ben underscore Salter on Twitter, and I think that's where you'll find him too. He pretty much is. Actually, I don't really, I don't really tweet about him that much anymore. He's not cute. He's just a one. <laughs> well, he is, but he's a one year old dog. He's not that puppy cute anymore. Follow Ben and his ugly dog at Ben underscore Salt. I'm, I'm actually, uh, oh, I'm probably going to put my foot in my mouth. I'm really happy that you haven't made like a, a specific individual account for your animal. I have refrained from doing that for my kitties. Uh, but you, you can see on S Right AU on primarily Instagram for the cats, but on all social medias ever. And uh, you can check us out on survivor.com where you are probably listening to this from or have found it from there. That's it. Anything else, Ben? Well, that's us done for this week. We'll be we'll be back in two weeks, hopefully, with episode 200 or episode 199.5, depending on how things pan out. Followed by 199.6, depending if we need to just really stretch it out. We'll see how we go. Really pushing out. Thanks that's for joining it. us. Well, we'll see you then.